Here's a common scenario. You want to use your 3D object on another app, so you have to somehow export it to a format the other app can read. The easy and most typical go-to solution is the OBJ format. Your export goes without any errors, but just to make sure you import the OBJ back to cinema. The textures load fine, so you think you're good to go. But then you open up the same file on another application and none of the textures load. I'm sure you've stumbled on this before and let me tell you there's nothing more annoying than that. Thankfully it's a simple thing to fix, but in order for us to correct the issue, we need to dive deep into the intricacies of the OBJ file format and Cinema's strange exporting options. Let's go! Let's start simple. Let's first see how our material is structured. We have a diffuse map in the colder channel, a roughness map in reflections, and finally a normal map. We'll cover redshift materials in a bit, but for now, let's go with Cinema's standard material. You'll see why later on. Okay, now let's export the object as an OBJ. I'm gonna pick local paths for the material. Even if we pick the original paths option, the result would be exactly the same. There's a lot of weirdness going on. We're gonna cover everything as clearly as possible, but for now, let's just stick to local paths. Because we chose to save the material along with its geometry, we will get two files. The actual object, that's the obj file, and the material info, the mtl file. The issue lies within the mtl file, so let's open it up and see what's there. There's a lot of numbers and weird abbreviations, but all you need to know is that these things describe the material of our object. KD, for example, is responsible for the diffuse part of our object. Along with the diffuse values here, we have a path for our diffuse texture. A few lines below that, there's the roughness map of our object, and a couple lines below that, the normal map texture. As you can see, the textures are right there in the MTL file, so what's going on? What we're missing is the actual paths of the textures. So when the other application tries to load the object, it sees that there are some textures to load, but it doesn't know where to look. So we somehow need to add these paths into the MTL file, and we're going to do that right here in our text editor. Let's first see where our textures live. They're in a text folder inside the projects folder. So the syntax should go like this. Period, forward slash, text, forward slash, and then the textures file name. I had to experiment quite a bit to figure out the correct syntax, but <laughs> now it's ingrained in my brain. The beauty of defining the path like that is that we're not using an absolute path, so if we moved our project to another location, the OBJ will still load fine. So let's go ahead and fix the paths for all of our maps and hit save. Now if we try to open up the file with another application, everything loads as expected. And if we move the object and texture file to another folder in a hard drive, it still loads fine. I can tell what you're thinking, why doesn't Cinema write the correct path from the beginning? <laughs> that is a good question, but I don't know the answer to that. The interesting thing is that even if we pick the other option, the original paths, Cinema would still not write the full path. So let's try that just to be 100% certain. Let's pick original paths, and let's call it chair2. If we now open up the MTL file, as you can see the file path is missing again. To my understanding, this option should give us the absolute paths of our textures, but it doesn't. Here's where things get crazy. Let's copy the object and now let's paste it into a new document. We will get this dialog asking us what we want to do with the paths, have them as absolute or as relative. Let's pick yes, and now if we save the OBJ with original paths, we do get the absolute path in the MTL file. I know, it's completely nuts. I think there's something wrong with the Cinemas exporter because we shouldn't have to do that to actually get the file paths. But whatever the case may be, I would suggest to not use absolute paths for your OBJ files because when you share the file with someone else, they won't be able to load the textures because they won't have the same file structure as yourself. 
but even if we did save the object with absolute paths, it's easy to convert to a relative. We can just load the MTL file in a text editor and replace the drives path with a period. And that's it. Now we're working with relative paths. Okay, so we have the whole standard material and OBJ export nailed down. How about Redshift? Can we export our texture successfully? <laughs> Unfortunately, things are even worse there. We don't even get the file names of the textures on the MTL file. But let's go through the process so we can see what's going on step by step. I've converted the material to Redshift, so here's how the nodal setup looks. We have our diffuse map, our roughness, and finally the normal map. Now, if we export to OBJ, Here's how the MTL file looks. We only get some generic roughness, illumination, and ambience values. The texture maps are not there at all. <laughs> but since we already know how to structure the material, it's easy to just type in the paths. If you recall, KD is the diffuse part of the material. So we will type in map underscore KD and then the path of the texture. We'll do the same for roughness, so map underscore PR and then the path. And finally, norm for the normal channel and the path of the texture. And that's it, now the OBJ will load correctly. As you can see, OBJ exporting can be a tiny bit finicky, but at least now you won't go crazy wondering why the textures don't load at all. Could we use other formats instead of OBJ? Yes, we could, but these also have their own set of issues. The whole exporting and importing process is a complete nightmare, not just in cinema, but pretty much in any 3D application. I really don't understand why that is, but unfortunately that's the situation we have to deal with. Let's take USD as an example. Exporting the object without baking the textures won't give us any useful materials. We have to choose the baking option in order to get the textures along with the object. But having to go through that process just to be able to open up the file in another application is extremely annoying. Even this option though is not error free. If we open up the USD file we just exported and choose the Redshift nodal material option, here's how the nodal setup looks. <laughs> it's just super weird. Just as a reminder, here's Redshift's nodal material. It's super simple. We have the diffuse map, the roughness, and the normal map. And here's how the Redshift nodal material looks when it's created from an imported USD file. The normal map is missing completely, and on top of that we have a Redshift material node connected to another Redshift material node. I have no clue what's going on here. I could go on and on, not just with USD, but with FBX too. So here's my simple solution. If you just have simple objects without any animation data, go with OBJ. It's the simplest and less fussy format when it comes to geometry. If you have the patience, you can also adjust the texture paths on the MTL files and the textures will then load correctly without any issue. Otherwise, just go ahead and only export the geometry and recreate the materials from scratch in that other application. In some cases though, you won't have a choice and you will have to edit the MTL file because the application expects a texture. For example, Agisoft's Delighter. Is this whole workflow ideal? <laughs> Absolutely not, but unfortunately, that's the situation we're currently in. Hopefully companies will try to improve the workflow, but until that happens, be aware that some manual work is required. And I think with that, I pretty much covered everything. If I miss something or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.